so much. It's such an honor to be here this morning with you, and thanks to Ann for all the work you do at the Healthcare Commission, and for the opportunity to talk to you today about the role and the work that we're doing in healthcare and healthcare in Delaware. Um, I just wanted to start by asking a few questions. Many of you are here because healthcare is probably a pressing need. Show of hands. Probably a concern. Uh, how many of you have been told, please lower healthcare costs on our bottom line? How many of you have said, figure out something that will fix healthcare for us as a business and make us more profitable? I, I mean, this is an ongoing conversation, not just hitting us here in Delaware, but really facing the nation. And I think in Delaware, we have a very unique set of circumstances to give us a path forward that can really uh, prove successful. And the opportunity is really yours. In, in the dynamic that we're in today, the purchasers, the employers, have a lot of leverage in defining healthcare and healthcare solutions. You don't have to be Warren Buffett or Jeff Bezos to figure out that you have a lot of leverage. But certainly in a, in a state where we can get people in a room to talk together, the opportunity to build coalitions and partner and think about leveraging purchasing power is significant and a true opportunity. And I love this quote, and I think it's true in healthcare and beyond, but I'm going to also talk about the role that the state can play in helping facilitate that change. We know that uh, in terms of what's going on in the state, we know that the employers are faced with a growing share of what you pay for health insurance. And the, the shift to putting more premium costs onto your employees is also increasing. It's just hard to make it match and go forward in a way that you don't have your employees facing greater co-pays and deductibles and cost sharing in, a, in an environment where we know that costs overall are growing. We also know, you know, through this additional cost share, it's, it's really interesting to think about the incentives around wellness and taking personal responsibility to ensure that we're really looking at the best way to have healthy employees who are successful both in what they do at work but also at home and at play. And we know that those increasing health insurance costs, the healthcare costs of your self-insured make it difficult to expand your workforce, hire additional employees, and whether you're a large employer or a small employer, certainly you consider how much additional healthcare costs are going to impact your bottom line. And many of you in this room are trying to struggle with that day by day, figure out what the solutions are. Um, certainly, we've heard from small businesses up and down the state that making additional investments is more and more challenging. And Governor Carney heard this on his road tour while he was doing the budget reset that small businesses and large businesses alike have health care as their number one concern and pressing issue. We also know that premiums continue to grow. And they're growing for many reasons, but the growth over a 10-year period has been significant and can't be ignored. And many in the state have said, hey, what's going on with my bottom line? With When I sit at the grocery uh, store line, am I really thinking about the costs that are hitting me in the same way that I'm deciding on, on this box or that box? No, I mean, people are having trouble figuring out what the true cost of healthcare is and what is really underlying the growth in their premiums. But certainly, employer contributions continue to increase, and you can see it's a, a greater portion of the pie. 51% are employer contribution increase increases over time. We also know that the growth of high deductible plans has been increasing over time. And you can see from this, this graph that there is a significant increase in the number of firms who have high deductible plans that give this as an option. And then what's underneath of those high deductible plans is also critically important, where some uh, employees are trying to figure out the best they can what to do with these high deductible plans. What choices can they make? How can they make the best choices uh, between one test or another test or one facility and another facility if they don't have great information in front of them? And so this is an ongoing dialogue that many are facing. We know that uh, healthcare costs are shared, and certainly when the typical family of four has healthcare costs of $25,000 or more, and where prescription costs are about 17% uh, of the total healthcare spend, it is an increasing number uh, that's growing over the past decade. This is certainly, again, something that we have to figure out how to support families. Uh, the typical cost for a family of four, the cost breakdown for employers and premiums and out-of-pocket costs is also growing over time. We also know that for all that you're spending, 
We know that in the state, we're continually trying to emphasize health and wellness and outcomes. But we also see through many indicators, the overall population in Delaware is actually pretty sick. We actually have pretty poor health outcomes overall, and we're older and aging even faster. And so this is a challenge when you start to say, where we're ranked 30th, whether you're looking at obesity rates or cancer deaths or overdose deaths or infant mortality or low physical activity, we have a lot of opportunity to engage our employees in wellness and uh, strategies to take additional opportunities to engage them in healthcare, engage them in primary care and wellness. This is part of the underlying reason that we are talking about moving Delaware on the road to value. And some of you may have seen us talk about this before, but the idea around focusing on healthcare costs and outcomes is a progression. It's where are we now and where are we heading? And we want to get to a place that right now today we know that we need to build in patient-centered opportunities and choices and focus on the data that we can use and have to inform these, these choices and policy solutions. We also need to make sure we're engaging local communities. And that could be communities where you live, where you work, where you play. We also know that we want to improve the health for special populations, those who are most likely to often drive those costs up. How do we engage those who have some of the uh, greater uh, health needs in our state? So Delaware is on this road to value where we're paying for outcomes and not simply visits and volume, but where we're starting to pay for health. But that's a transition that requires partnerships and many of you in the room. The healthcare spending benchmark is a huge priority of Governor Carney and his administration to make sure that we are starting to talk about how quickly our healthcare costs growing. The benchmark is important because we know that our per capita healthcare costs are more than 25% above the US average in the state. And Delaware's healthcare spending is expected to double by 2025. We also know when we start to look at the state's budget, budget and the state's portion of healthcare spending, overall, healthcare consumes 30% of Delaware's state budget. That means if you pay taxes, even if you don't receive Medicaid or state employee benefits from this, the state of Delaware, you are still contributing to this growing piece of the pie. We also know that overall, the media monthly contributions for healthcare have grown by almost 6% uh, annually since 2010. But the annual wage growth in our state has not kept pace. It's been about 4%. And our overall economy has grown at about 3%. So, as the, you look at the entire pie and the entire state's budget, when you consume 30% and grow faster than the pace of the income that's coming in, the revenue that's coming into the state, we know that it's outpacing uh, the, the sustainable financial planning that the governor is committed to. If you start to break down those segments, those pieces of the, of the state budget, we know that healthcare is growing faster than salaries or infrastructure or public education or infrastructure. Things that we know as a healthcare community influence health outcomes to a greater extent than anything we do in the healthcare system. But when it grows faster, we know that we have to figure out how to maintain uh, and monitor this cost increase over time. And you can see in this graph, uh, the healthcare bar has grown faster in a five-year period than any other segment of the state budget. We also know it crowds out necessary investments in salary and what we're doing in investing in our children in public education and infrastructure like our roads and highways and public safety. And by the way, if you haven't seen this graph, we do want to call attention to this by estimates that were put out this summer and put out pretty regularly from uh, CMS. Delaware spends more on health care than most other states. We're the third highest per capita state in the country. There are two states above us, Massachusetts and Alaska. And this is putting us um, in a very unique situation where we can start to say, well, out of this total, what is really driving some of this increase in cost per person? Uh, is it something unique about who lives here and who is really contributing to costs, or is it something that we need to focus on in terms of health outcomes that are driving this increase? We've tried to piece that apart, and I'll talk about it a bit. Uh, we also know that we would like to have better data and figure out ways to have data that's owned by us that we can say, where are we really uh, increasing year over year? How do we grow faster than, uh, than other segments, other states over time? 
But we also know that we have to get to a place where if we're on a path to double, we are going to have to figure out how to generate revenue that will keep up with this pace in the state. And so the idea behind the healthcare spending benchmark is to say, we need a target, we need a goal, we need to figure out how to plan for the future. Many of you in this room spend your time planning for the future. How do we get to a place where we can say maybe a 5% trend line and growth rate is sustainable for us? A 3% trend line is sustainable and we can, we can live within those, those limits. And how do we just set forth a plan to say we want to calculate the total cost and year over year measure that progression, measure that growth over time. So the idea behind the healthcare spending benchmark is to have a goal, have a target, and focus on transparency of data and information. We also know that those of you who are in the private sector uh, account for nearly two thirds of Delaware's healthcare spending. So this problem is one that we share. It's not just about what we spend in Medicaid that is a state and federal program. Uh, it's not just about what the federal government pays through Medicare, but it really is about the other part. 64% of our healthcare spending is in the private sector. How do we use that, again, as an opportunity to build conversation and opportunities to uh, focus on healthcare spending collectively? We also know that if you look at total spend and spending growth in all segments, whether it's uh, private pay, Medicare, or Medicaid, the, the private pay has seen increasing growth more than the other segments. We've been pretty level in terms of Medicaid and Medicare, but the private segment is significantly taking on this burden uh, more than any other segment. And so we, the healthcare spending benchmark will allow us to parse out how, how are things moving in different segments by payer, by location, by setting over time. Many of them said, well, is it something that we do differently in a certain segment? Is it pharmacy costs? Is it nursing home costs? Is it something we're doing with physician services or hospital services? This graph shows that in every category of service reported by CMS, you can see that Delaware is higher than the national average. And this, again, is just telling the story that we need to think about what we're doing across the board. It's not calling out any one thing. It's not just that we're older and there's a lot more nursing home uh, care than other states or that pharmacy costs hit us higher. We just really need to figure out across the board what we're doing uh, around increased healthcare spending per person. We also know that there's a primary care challenge. One of the, the biggest things we've heard as we engage providers in this conversation is that we need more primary care providers focusing on prevention and wellness and coordinating care and getting reimbursed at the right rate. One of the challenges for Delaware is that we do have a shortage of primary care physicians, particularly in Kent and Sussex counties, where many say, I can't get into a provider, I really need um, somebody who can continue to engage me uh, in ongoing ways. And, I, and this is one of the opportunities we have to also focus collectively, because you can really think about how to ensure that you're embracing primary care, that you look at your reimbursement rates for primary care, and that you think about ways to, de to develop incentives to drive more care into primary care settings and less into hospital and emergency room settings, which we know can be higher than what would happen in a primary care setting. Unfortunately, the state of primary care in Delaware um, is, is one in which we think is challenged. We think that in, in most places, the evidence shows if you spend about 12% of your dollar in primary care, you actually get lower costs and better outcomes. In the US, an average, it's about 6%. And in Delaware, estimates say we're about 3 to 4%. We don't really know why. We know we have a lot of small independent practices up and down the state. However, it really is an opportunity, again, to bring us all together and say, let's look at, use the data we have to look at what spend is going to primary care. How do we use this as an opportunity to invest in primary care and then get back that return on investment for additional cost savings? So this is a small video that we just like to show. It's very short, I promise. Um, and it just underscores that we have heard the message from many small business owners about the challenges in health. My name is Dave McGurk. My name is Dave McGurgan. Uh, I live in Wilmington, Delaware, uh, and I'm a small business owner. Over a four-year period, uh, between my wife and I, we were laid off three times. Each time that we were laid off, not only did we lose uh, our, our job, uh, but we also lost our health care benefits. 
And uh, what we decided to do was start our own business. Uh, and we were able to do that uh, because of the Affordable Care Act and with the fact that we were able to purchase health care coverage through the marketplace. So we're, we're at the point in just a few short years uh, where it's become increasingly difficult to um, you know, grow our business uh, it, it, because we're, the monthly premium is, is become so substantial. I really am grateful for the legislators in Delaware who are working to uh, rein in uh, the rising uh, cost of health care in Delaware. Uh, and there seems like there's a recognition that it's not sustainable, and I think that's pretty clear. And uh, um, I'm hoping that uh, the folks who are working on the policy and legislation are able to be successful. But we've heard other stories from small businesses who have said, you know, if I hire one uh, employee, I've seen my costs double or triple or quadruple. We've heard from others who say, my strategy is to hire millennials because they're on their parents' insurance. Um, and, you know, the, these are real challenges facing uh, small business owners, and, and people are trying to figure it out. But I think we have collectively an opportunity to, to address this together. So we know that at the state level, we purchase health care to a greater extent than many other places, um, and particularly compared to other states because we are small and have, have both Medicaid and what we do with state employee benefits, correctional facilities, and others up and down the state. And we've made progress, significant progress in the state in moving to value-based payment models. And we want to continue to accelerate that movement and focus on how we increase the adoption of value-based payment models. Uh, we know that the current pace of adoption for these downside risk models is challenging, and it may not be sufficient if we don't accelerate that and help it along. Uh, and so that's, the, that's what we're really trying to do by uh, engaging stakeholders and having these conversations about what the pace is and what investments are necessary. Overall, the objective is, again, we're on this road to value. This is not an overnight switch. There's not something that can happen immediately to make this change. But we want to give Delawareans choices and better information to help them make better healthcare decisions. That would impact you and your bottom line, but that would also impact them as individuals. We also want to reinforce healthy choices through institution and neighborhood design, how, how communities are. We're focused on healthy neighborhoods and how we really increase the awareness of wellness and support services. And then additionally, uh, supporting primary care investments is critically important for this to be the foundation of how we improve health and health care. So I'll go through seven strategies that are included in the healthcare spending benchmark. The number one strategy is that we improve healthcare quality and costs. And we want a value-based, health-focused public health framework to guide the way, to focus on where we're going. We want to create and incentivize systems of care centered on quality, patient experience, and a strong primary care foundation. And finally, we know that about 30 to 40% of all healthcare costs are identified as waste or unnecessary. How do we use that as an opportunity to reduce some of the unnecessary and inappropriate care and costs in the system? Strategy two, we want to pay for value. We want to do that at the state level. We're doing that within the Medicaid managed care contracts working closely with our state employee benefits partners. But how do we establish the healthcare spending benchmark that's focused on transparency and better data, but also helps us identify cost drivers and opportunities to improve the patient experience and quality? How do we reinvent uh, and reorient the data-driven monitoring of cost towards value? In, and put this information in the hands of physicians. We know that physicians are making many choices with their uh, patients, uh, interaction by interaction. How do we put that information in an actionable format? And we have many opportunities to invest in that uh, through state leadership. Strategy three is to support patient-centered, coordinated care. There are many opportunities and, and many uh, examples of success up and down the state where accountable care entities are are uh, taking the opportunity to facilitate the integration of services and be a patient-centered medical home and take on risks. But we also want to make sure we're facilitating opportunities to experiment, try out all pair ACOs. And maybe this is a chance for you to say, I'm, I'm expecting to be able to pay for value-based care that is in, organized in an accountable care entity. How do we facilitate that as a conversation? 
We also want to support and pay for coordination of care. This often is not reimbursed in a fee-for-service world. How do we use the benchmark as a way to pay for that coordination of care that we know makes a difference, whether it's a patient navigator or a care manager or a nurse care manager. We know that those things are evidence-based and have been proven effective, uh, but often aren't reimbursed. And how do we also focus on the safety net services that we also want to be uh, in place and strong? Finally, we want to make sure that the Health Resources Board Authority that is under the Health Care Commission is also well suited to have data and information about system growth and right sizing as it goes forward. Strategy four builds on the idea that we need a, a health care provider workforce that is ready for the future and that we have an infrastructure that supports the current needs. We have an opioid crisis right now. How do we make sure we have enough behavioral health providers up and down the state ready to address this crisis? How do we make sure that with growing diversity in our state and a growing aging population, we have providers who are ready and deployed in the right places at the right time to reflect those changes in our demographics? And we also want to leverage the opportunity in telehealth. Delaware reimburses telehealth just as it does for other visits. How do we, again, accelerate the adoption of telehealth and the use of, of um, virtual kinds of medicine to increase access to services? Strategy five, improving healthcare for special populations. We want to make sure that we're focusing on things that work. We know that uh, there are many opportunities to promote health equity for people with disabilities, including re reorienting how those providers and specialists are organized and coordinated. We also know that we have many services like the Nurse Family Partnership that have been proven effective to improve infant mortality rates. So can we focus on maternal and child health there through how we reimburse for care? And we have a lot of trauma in our state. Something like 40% of all children have experienced an adverse childhood event in our state. Can we have a system that is oriented to trauma-informed care, where everyone is asked about, have you experienced an adverse childhood event? How do we make sure we're picking up opportunities to address bullying and other kinds of trauma in our schools and young people? And then we also want to make sure that we're focusing on opportunities to connect between prisons and correctional medicine and the outpatient setting. So how do we, again, use this to capture the idea that we need a patient-centered medical home for those who are coming into their communities from prison, making sure we're addressing their mental health needs in an ongoing way. Strategy six builds on these ideas and principles uh, that have been uh, embraced by the state innovation model and the work of the Delaware Center for Health Innovation to make sure that we're focused on community-based initiatives and wellness initiatives, including adverse childhood events, obesity, uh, prevention, and tobacco cessation. We also want population dashboards that you can pull up no matter where you live, what community you identify with. So you can say, my community is a little different and has issues around transportation or around uh, access to certain specialties that's different and unique than other locations and other communities. So how do we get to a place where we have some interactive uh, maps and, and information that can really guide local, local health initiatives? And finally, the seventh strategy is to ensure we have the best data available to make informed decisions. We're using data that, that could come into us through the healthcare spending benchmark. Uh, the governor set forth an advisory committee that's informing what data we will use uh, to measure total healthcare spend in our state and what we might use to track the growth in that spending. Uh, we actually meet tomorrow, so again, you can find me on Facebook Live almost every day. Uh, there's nothing better to do. But we, um, we are really looking forward to having a conversation about what is the data, what's the right population, how do you measure this, what, what is the target setting mechanism. Um, but we also want to make sure we're looking at the data we have, whether it's through Medicaid or whether it's through state employees, or whether it's working with you on what data you own. Can you identify those employees, those groups of populations that really do need better access to diabetes prevention programs, which are in the Division of Public Health, you know, that we, they, we run and support? Or can we find other ways to support access to infant mortality strategies because you're really having trouble with lots of, lots of uh, new babies coming into the world and we want to support them at their vulnerable moments? How do we use this as an opportunity to really guide data uh, and action uh, that are interconnected. 
We also want to make sure that at some point we're using this information to guide the movement to value-based payments. So accountable care organizations um, are emerging. How do we use data that can be useful to them and find a way that they're not duplicating efforts to recreate the wheel uh, at, at the moment that they're ready to take on more risk? How do we also align all payers with total cost of care models, leveraging the capacity we've invested in in the state uh, through the DIN to really look at what could be leveraged? And how do we also think about leveraging statewide purchasing power in some way that makes sense uh, to accelerate some of this momentum? And we've had many uh, very reassuring conversations about how the state can play a role, how Medicaid plays a role, and how we can think about supporting that movement and, and supporting in a voluntary way the conversations around aligning private pay. We also know that this it may be important for us to think about the exchange and, and Medicare ACO strategies. We certainly have many opportunities. Many small businesses have said, hey, you know, if we can't afford um, to bring in additional employees, maybe there's a way you can think about the exchange uh, as, a, as a place to support what options are available to our employees. So overall, the benchmark has a lot of elements and a lot of strategies underneath it. The essential key element we're working on is how do we use this uh, opportunity to have better data, to feedback opportunities to talk about payment reform and how care is organized. It's not necessarily going to mandate a path forward, but really allow all flowers to bloom by having information that can guide next steps and the right questions and the right answers. If you're interested in finding out more about the benchmark and, and uh, quality work, you can take a look at our ChooseHealthDE.com website. We do post both background information, um, slides about what and how we will measure total cost of care in the state. And we're very interested in hearing from you. And so if you're interested in either tweeting at us, emailing us, uh, posting on Facebook, you can feel free to do so on that website. It'll direct you in the right way. We have several white papers that are also available on the website if you're interested in learning more. And as always, we're interested in your feedback. I do have some asks. You give me the mic and I'm going to stand up here and ask a few things <laughs> of you. Uh, the, the first thing is I think we have uh, four key areas where it would be wonderful to work together uh, employees can become healthier and better navigators, and there are huge opportunities to communicate information about better health choices and wellness, and focus on finding the right health information. Um, and whether that's something we can play a role in, or whether you've already invested significantly in, I think making sure that employees have access to great health information would be uh, important. We also want to encourage all employees to have a primary care physician. Um, and, and know where to go to find one. Uh, they can look up this information, obviously, through the payer websites, but there, there are so many resources out there about finding a good provider, but encouraging all of your employees to have a primary care physician. And we also want to figure out ways to focus on a health culture. And this is something, again, many of you think of more often than I do, but we're trying to think of creative ways to engage our staff. and. Unfortunately, or fortunately, I was trying to think of a way to get my staff to participate in some um, orientation activities around open enrollment. And suggested that instead of being at like 50 or 40 percent engagement numbers, we needed as a health agency to be at about 70 percent. So I said I would um, do a triathlon. Now I really didn't think we would get up to that goal, but we far exceeded it, and thankfully. My deputy secretary and I are going to try out a short, very short sprint triathlon. So I'm sure many of you would have better ideas for me next time around than yeah, this kind of a challenge. But I think I, the idea was we were trying to think of a health challenge to really engage our employees, and I guess it works. So we'll see how it goes. I'll post some pictures at some point. Um, <laughs> And finally, we want, uh, the second one is that we want to encourage employees to find high quality, high value health care. So we want to make sure that providers know they're getting the right care at the right time. And this is really hard for people to figure out. I mean, I'm a family physician. I have questions all the time. And I try to also educate my you know, family members. And it's a very impossible conversation because you're never a doctor and a daughter. It just never works that way. But I think the more we can connect people with uh, respected, um, valuable, 
informed decision making, the better off we'll be collectively. We also want to make sure that we're navigating the quality and cost data, and that's where I see DHSS and as secretary playing a huge role, making sure that you have the right information about cost and quality uh, information and variation. This is kind of a sub bullet under the healthcare cost benchmark work, but it's one that we have called out as important so that people can make decisions. And I don't know yet what the advisory committee will say about reporting on price variation, but if more and more people are engaging in high deductible plans, they need to have good information to make decisions about the cost of care and the quality of locations where they're, where they're going for care. And whether that's centers of excellence or other strategies, we know that that's a really important, helpful tool for employees. We also know that you as employers have additional leverage. And some of that is around value-based benefit design. It's hard work uh, to focus on these efforts, uh, but certainly you have access to your own healthcare costs and claims data, uh, and you have access to information about quality that, that often your employees don't see. So just taking a look at that information could be useful, and we'd love to hear again how you're having uh, success or challenges in navigating uh, what those what those data points are telling you. We'd also encourage you to think about incentives to go to the top rated providers, um, think about in improving primary care utilization and decreasing unnecessary emergency department use. It's easy to say, it's been, standing, it's been around for a long time, uh, but you know, if there are opportunities, again, for us to support you in that data uh, that you may need to, to do that work, we'd be happy to hear about it. And finally, I think it's really important to think about these uh, business health alliances. This is where I see a lot of really interesting innovation happening. Having a larger voice around quality and cost could be useful, and it's certainly useful for me to hear about how, how you're really navigating the landscape, how you're thinking about combining purchasing power, how you're thinking about looking at benefit design collectively. If there are opportunities, again, to bring two or three together for us to have a conversation uh, about what policy levers are in your way or helping you, that would be incredibly useful and we'd love to hear from you. And I think overall the idea is expect more for your dollar and expect more in the outcomes that you're getting. We know, again, holistically as a state, we're spending a lot and not necessarily getting the best health. But if this is a chance for us to bring people together and do this in a smaller um, smaller environment, we'd be really happy to think about uh, those strategies. So I see many areas for collaboration. First is we have a huge role to play in making sure the data is available and transparent and usable to you and to the public. Uh, second, we certainly want to know that we want to be able to plan for the unexpected. We don't know what the data will tell us, and so we want to be able to adjust as needed, uh, make modifications. This work is really about transparency, and so it's not about setting up a penalty or a cap or paying for care in a different way, but if you're planning for the unexpected, we can then adjust and pivot and work together to say, hey, this year we had a really hard year in pharmacy costs, or something changed in the Delaware landscape around you know, what we're doing around uh, dental care, for example, and throwing these down there. Um, and that would be really helpful for us to talk about and collaborate on. We also know that we need to be able to project the need of the future. It's not just about what's happening now, and, and but we really need to say, are we making progress to get to a sustainable path? If we are here at this point in time, in five years, where do we want to be? In 10 years, how are we going to get there? And we have a very unique opportunity, again, to pull people together in the room and talk this out. And finally, this is about creating win-win solutions. We aren't about sort of putting people out there or you know, penalizing anyone, but it's really about the collaboration and the thinking together, the strategy about aligning all of the purchasing that we do and thinking about how you create solutions to engage the consumers, uh, the business community, the provider community around what this benchmark could look like, but also what other policy solutions need to be for the future. So we're really excited about the implementation plan for the healthcare benchmark. Again, it's a start to a conversation. This year, we are in the planning year where we're defining and measuring and uh, figuring out what will go into calculating uh, healthcare costs. It's, it's just the start. Next year would be when we start to uh, focus on models uh, around creating this, this first data point. It really isn't about necessarily setting a goal or making an assessment of whether we made the target or not. It's really just saying, this is where we are right now. And then year three would be, you know, did we make the target or did we miss it? And how does it look 
what does that present as opportunities? Uh, again, to say if we did a good job or we're on that path of sustainability or we, we really do need to uh, readjust and redirect. So if you want to get involved, please feel free to uh, reach out to us. We're happy to hear from you. Our health DE at state.de.us is our public inbox if you want to send uh, either public comments uh, about this process, about the usefulness of having uh, increased data that would be available to you and your employees. Uh, but we also have resources, the white papers are listed on that, um, on that, that slide. If you can't read them in the back, they're on that website, choosehealthde.com. So thank you so much for the opportunity uh, to present today. I really appreciate it. Thank you.